All right, now it's time to disassemble this motor. Um, I've already got the clutch off, the heads off. I've got my 33 millimeter uh, flywheel puller for the FEMSA here. And I've got my crankcase splitter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just clean this up a little bit, get all this gunk off. After that, I'm gonna pull the flywheel and then I'm gonna split the cases so we can find out what the heck is going on with this crank. I normally uh, do all my cleaning outside, but Phoenix is officially very hot. So trying to take advantage of being under the shade here in the garage. But uh, I'm also working with gloves today. I'm not usually this dainty. I didn't feel like washing my hands. I'm gonna get all this gunk off as much as I can before I open up the motor. I wonder how old this dirt is. It's like probably 40 years old, I guess. Pretty sure it hasn't been run since. I have a feeling what happened is it something froze up in the motor and it got parked. And even though it was a badass bike, it never got ridden again. See what's going on as I'm cleaning this thing I keep finding more safety wire there and I can see it behind the, uh, the flywheel back there I bet this thing is just full of it cleaned up the cases a little bit <sighs> number matching I didn't expect it not to be in triumphs it's kind of common to find non matching cases because one gets blown out but I didn't expect to see anything different than that on this. First thing I'm gonna do is use my flywheel puller. This is actually the second one I bought. I had looked this motor up online and it said 27 millimeter. And of course I didn't verify that and it does not fit. You need a 33 millimeter for this bike. For this FEMSA flywheel. I don't know much more about it than that, but. All right. with the right tool. I wonder if there's uh, some sort of vibration issue with these. It looks like these uh, the screws holding on this plate are actually sealed on. That came out remarkably easy. Okay, the point side is open. We've got a couple bearing carriers that I don't think it makes a difference if you take them off now or after. A few case bolts, this safety wire right here. And all this side has is this gear on the crankshaft. So I'll pull that and then we'll work on the other side. I think that's working.
Okay, I have this uh, cheapo gear pulley here. I had to grind the bottom out to get it underneath this gear. So I think this should be the trick. Um, I don't think that was good. Whoo, that was that scared me. I, there was a chip here. I'm like, oh no, did I just chip that gear? No, I chipped the cheapo gear puller. There we go. There's a piece missing. The gear came off. It's fine. On hindsight, I probably should have put some heat on that first. I guess I'll remove the uh, carrier line here. Bag and tag that. Okay, it looks like there's a little slip ring and then another washer right here. And the slip ring's pretty stuck on there. So let's see if I can get it off. Bearings, bearings, bearings. I don't think there's anything left on this side. The side has some bearing retainers, the uh, safety wire, and then all the case bolts, and also this guy. So let me clip this wire. I guess I should have drained the oil from this first, but I don't think there's too much in there. It's been on its side, and not really much is coming out. Okay, let's take these bearing retainers off. Sealed on. Loop. Ew, that's pretty nasty in there. Not the cleanest looking bearing I've ever seen. That does not bode well for me. You know what? I kind of wonder if he was in like a uh, a water a race that had a lot of water in it, and it just sucked in the bike. And just went into the bottom end of this bike and just seized this thing up. I don't know. I know he probably kept it outside for many years, but I think it was under a tarp. Okay. Again, not that wonderful. Okay, all we got left is case bolts. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Okay, I believe standard procedure is to split the cases from uh, the tiny side here. So I got a little penny just for shizzle gizzles. I'm going to put it in there, give it something to go up against. Looks like there's some convenient places for this. Okay, I've got this all tight. Pull the center, I've got my penny in there just for shits and giggles. I'm going to take this slow, a little bit at a time.
Oh, jeez. Already popped. Okay, that's good. We got some pop action going in the front, but not much going on in the rear. Of course. Oh, popped it. There we go. That's good. So far, so good. Sure we're opening up the same. Still a little bit slow on the back. It's coming out. I can feel it going nice and smooth. Looking good. No problems whatsoever so far. Kind of really, really, really excited to see what's in going on in here. I bet it's going to be a little bit horrifying. Slowing down. We were a little hung up back here, but taps and open right up. It's like butter now. In fact. Oh, my penny fell out. I'm not even on my penny. It's good to know. Haha. <laughs> this is exciting. This is exciting. There's a cavity right here. I know what this means. Whoever worked on this motor, that's from them. All right, I think we're apart. Let's undo this stuff. Oh boy. Oh, there's our crank pieces of the gearbox that just fell out. Uh, I didn't realize you used a gasket. I thought it was sealing. Okay, so it's a little rusty in here. Most of it can be cleaned up pretty good. I don't want to pull these out yet. There's some uh, definite signs of cur- oh my goodness, okay. We'll get to that in just a second. Look at that corrosion. that. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Interesting. Okay. Definitely was full of water at one point, I do believe. So right there is where that piece of paper was kept. Let's see what it says. <laughs> oh man, this is really awesome. Split cases 92376 to put WR 5th and 6th, so it's a wide ratio. Everything looks super good. No wear. Harvey Abel. Put all new gaskets and seals and ring. That is so freaking cool. Back to the motor. Man, I don't think it looked this way when Harvey built it back. Looks like uh, a lot of the uh, magnesium casing is starting to corrode away right here. There must have been a lot of water right there. Good lord. Oh boy. I mean, I hope it can be fixed. Everything can be cleaned up, right? Everything looks okay. I think it's just, uh, everything just has a little bit of surface rust on it. My uh, 
I had a Triumph gearbox that looked a little bit worse than that, but it didn't look like that. Yikes. I've been spending some time trying to get this crank that's frozen in the left side case out. I've managed to get the crank to start spinning. So that means that the bearing's at least free, but it's stuck in the other side. It's stuck in that bearing. I think if I can just get that loose, it'll finally come out. After a few pretty decent blows, I finally got it out of that bearing. Now I just gotta tap it out. After a little bit of work, she finally came out. I don't know what all this stuff is. It looks like really nasty corrosion. It also looks like it ate away a little bit of the case just like it did the other side. But I don't think it's going to affect anything. So now time to get this all cleaned up. Well there she is, all torn down. There's a few more sub-assemblies to go through, but this is the most of it. The crank looks like it should be alright. I don't know if this is uh, very good for the connecting rod, but I'll just send this to a specialist. The rest of this I can do. The plan is to get these cases uh, vapor blasted, all aluminum, well I guess I should say aluminum and magnesium vapor blasted. All this surface rust should clean up just fine. I assume that's some sort of reed valve inside the barrels there. I'll take that off and take a look. I kind of don't know where most of this goes because it just kind of fell apart on me. So I guess that's what a book is for, huh? On that paper that was inside that little enclosure, he said he added the fifth and sixth gear out of a WR, a wide ratio. So I guess this is no longer a CR, just by name. That makes sense a little bit for desert riding versus motocross riding. I'm pulling the uh, intake reed valve assembly apart and there's a decent amount of corrosion in there. Looks like it sucked out some old foam or something. A little crusty. I think these things need replaced after a certain amount of time. I would certainly think they would need replaced after 40 years. Intake assembly is all off. Little wasp nest right there. Okay, the head's apart. The cylinder dome and the head looks pretty good. No uh, signs of anything being lean. Got the piston off. I don't know if this is standard play, but it moves pretty good. So I think this can all be cleaned up pretty good. It doesn't look bad. It's just covered in some gunk. Piston look fine. Rings are stuck. I've got the cases pretty much down to just needing to remove the bearings. So even though this is in the parts book, I've been writing down what these bearings are. You can get them at an SKF supplier. I think it costs about a hundred bucks for all of them. So there's some of the damage. It definitely goes down a little bit, especially that one, ouch. But I've been reading that you can just use a filler like JB Weld or something like that and it's totally fine. They make stuff specifically that'll grab really good. So I'm going to get these down, just the bare cases and all the other parts down to the bare aluminum and magnesium and then I'm going to send them off to my buddy for vapor blasting. So let's get these bearings out.
Ready? So I need to figure out how to get this one out. I tried so many different configurations and I finally got one that's working. This is the remnants of all the uh, different attempts it took to get that bearing out. That last bearing was quite a pain, but I finally got it out, and these cases are now ready for vapor blasting. All right, next up is the uh, clutch cover, which has the kicker and the shifter. So pretty simple assembly. I'm going to take this all apart. Once again, we'll start with removing some uh, safety wire. Okay, let's take the uh, shifter and the kicker off. So this, these bolts have been replaced with American thread. Now we have the shift mechanism to remove. It's held in by a set screw right there, or a, just a screw. It came out too easy. So now I should just push out. Okay. Now we have the uh, kick shaft spring assembly. And there's a surf flip. retention ring right in there. I'm probably not going to videotape this because these take me forever. Alright, looks like I'm about to get that little clip out. I'm sure there's a specialized tool for this, but I don't have it and I rarely deal with this type of thing. I basically had to put an X-Acto knife in on the side opposite the opening. Then I managed to use my little circlip tool to kind of pry that apart and lift it up that end. So now it looks like I can simply just, simply, simply just mess things up. Let's see. Maybe not as simple as I thought. It looked like it was just about to come out. Ugh. What a stupid little thing to be having such a hard time with. Looks like I gotta do that all over again. Ah! I have won! What a stupid little thing to be hung up on. Let me guess, I'm gonna find another lock ring. Okay then, that motor is completely disassembled. All right, the last thing to do for this motor disassembly is the carburetor. Now, 
on Triumphs we get the luxury that they remanufacture Amal carbs, but they, I don't think uh, bean carbs are reproduced. So hopefully this one's in just fine quality, <laughs> um, but we'll see. So let me tear it apart. Start by getting some of this stuff off. Yeah, a nice little uh, wing nut there. body is just a little bit warped. Okay, uh, I lost some power with my camera so I didn't get the carb apart on the film, but I think we've all done enough carbs. I was mistaken about that tickler. I guess, I guess that was part of the assembly. I'm not 100% sure how to get this out yet, but it's all there. Now I'll take it to my buddy for uh, vapor blasting.